Um, so I'm going to present you some things that are related to uh, game theory, but that for game theorists will seem rather trivial, because, well, well, I or we, I do this with other people, do not have many results of, you might say, um, theoretical importance from the perspective of game theory. The interest is that I apply some basic well, uh, games uh, in a setting of logics of knowledge and belief, in a setting of, of uh, what? So these are games where you play for information. And, and this is somewhat uncommon, and I'm trying to sell you this uh, uh, topic here today. Um, so the idea is that uh, we are in a setting, well, it's a part of, of uh, well, uh, several players, multiple agents, um, a setting in which there is uncertainty about a number of, of uh, propositional variables, a number of well, uh, things about the world, say, but wherein players can communicate to each other by way of either uh, uh, well, uh, informative so-called announcements or by way of asking questions to which they can get answers and that these will be the moves, the strategic choices you have to make. So it's a way of modeling communication in a sort of proce more procedural setting yeah, where the communicative acts are actually like uh, strategic moves in a game or the, the questions and Still then, um, the, the point is, okay, if, if these are games wherein you are playing for communication, are there equilibria to be achieved? So then, indeed, the connection is made to uh, game theory. So um, here is such a uh, uh, setting. So here we have that, uh, <coughs> we have two propositions, one is uh, Coffee will be served at the seminar, and the second is wine will be served at the seminar. And, uh, well, the idea is that we might be uncertain about which of these is true or false. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, it always depends on where you get this talk, whether one of these two is really reasonable. Um, but both can be true in principle, right? So we have two agents. Anne knows the value of P, and she doesn't know the value of Q, but Bill knows the value of Q, but doesn't know the value of P. And, well, and, and something else, but let me just uh, go to this uh, state describing this uncertainty. So here we have, uh, that's the, the pointer right here. <coughs> so here we have that there will be coffee but no wine. He will have that there is coffee and wine, and here there's no coffee but wine. Okay, so it's like three state descriptions, and um, A for M is uncertain between P not Q and PQ. So in a way she's certain about P but uncertain about Q. And B is uncertain between uh, PQ and not PQ, so B knows that there will be white, so to speak. But there's something hidden here because I'm assuming that this is a partition, so the one not PQ is also a situation where N knows that there will be no coffee, because this is the only alternative she considers. So we could consider this, this is like a domain of three things, and the partition for N is that she can distinguish these two from this one, and the partition for Bill is that he can distinguish these from that one. Okay, well then that's a Kripke model, but a Kripke model with equivalence relations, and then we can describe the uncertainty eh, of A and B in this situation in, in the model logic, um, such as that in state S, eh, N knows that P is true, because in state S, uh, P is true in the indistinguishable states here and here. Eh? But in state S, B doesn't know that P is true, because B considers it possible that P is false. Um, and so on. Also, I have the tendency to, to write a hat over the K operator to, to indicate that it's a diamond and not the, the box version of the modality. Um, so, so, well, first part I'm going to be uh, a, a bit quick until we get to uh, the games, but let's do first the logic part. So, in a way, I was giving you a, a very fast example of what is known as public announcement logic. Um, so, we have a, a language with, which is inductively defined like this. Yeah, it's a propositional language with modalities that are written ki for knowing that. Yeah, ki phi is known that phi. Um, and the main thing is that there are other modalities, dynamic modalities, uh, describing the effects of public announcements, the effect of communicative acts, um, such that, um, well, um, what do we have here? 
well, this is the, the inductive construct, but the idea is that, that uh, box phi psi stands for after announcing phi psi is true, and, um, and I will also use the diagonal for that. The structure we have seen uh, with the three uh, states with wine and coffee, I call uh, an epistemic model. Uh, so we have a, a state of possibilities. In this case, a number of equivalence relations, one for each agent of which you uh, are trying to model the, the knowledge or belief. And, and something that, that, that tells you what is true and false in each of these states. Yeah, like that coffee will be served, but wine will not be served. P true and true, false, things like that. Um, um, the semantics, just, well, just going through the standard movements here. Um, so we have a propositional part, like here, here, here. But let me just uh, point out the, the standard modal part that you know fine in every uh, indistinguishable T yeah, from your current state S, fine is true. Um, then, uh, just to do this a bit more uh, slowly, the red part. So the, the special thing about this logic, the public announcements, uh, the, the change of information modality, is that after phi psi is true in a state, if on condition that this information is truthful, okay, on condition that phi is true, um, you have that in the restriction of the model to all the states for phi is true, that is m uh, bar phi part, the post condition psi holds. Yeah. We will see an example of that. Um, then you define the model restriction in the obvious way, but let us look at uh, the example. Here we have the uh, state of information where A and B are uncertain. Um, now, M who, who you might say knows the truth about P, eh? so she can say, well, there will be coffee, or she can say there will not be coffee. Um, well, she could actually say that, so she could uh, say that there is coffee. Um, that's a public announcement. A public announcement results in a restriction of the model to all states where P is true. Okay, P is true here and here and false here, so we have that. Okay. Um, well, now we can say things about what agents know, but also what agents know before and after such an announcement. Yeah, so we could say, for example, uh, here, that, well, in state S, before the announcement, B didn't know that there was going to be coffee, not KBP. Yeah, but, well, conjunction. And um, after N says that P is true, he knows it. OK. Um, Similarly or analogously, B, B, B could also make uh, some announcements built. For example, he could announce that Q is true, and then we have this model restriction. So far, no games. Um, OK, let's, let's think about the game. Um, in a way, A and B can announce different things about what they know. But in, in this model, um, each agent has two equivalence classes, right? If you announce something you know, in fact, you, you well, the denotation of what you say yeah, uh, has to correspond to some such equivalence class or a union of equivalence classes. Yeah, because well, what, what, if you announce what you know, the, the formula you announce is the form k phi for some phi. So this k is interpreted in equivalence class. So the denotation of that is supposed to be in equivalence class, but it can be weaker. Yeah. Um, well, in what sense can it be weaker? Well, given that you would, what you announce is true, um, you can say something which is interpreted yeah, as your current equivalence class or as any union of equivalence classes that contains your current equivalence class. Yeah, so that is a sort of the liberty of the things you can announce. Um, are there settings wherein this would be, uh, well, well, interesting? Um, Maybe there's a um, there's a price in getting to know something last. Yeah. So there's an interest in getting to know something first. Yeah. So N might want to know uh, she doesn't know Q, but she wants to know the truth about Q. Um, and um, well, maybe Bill wants to know P. <coughs> um, uh, well, maybe not at the price of revealing the truth about uh, Q to N. Yeah. Well, in this. Then, then the idea about coffee and tea is not very realistic because then they both have an interest to know, but you can imagine other settings where P or Q are really secrets that they want to keep from each other. 
Um, given that we have such a model, well, what are the different meaningful things that N can say? Well, she can say that P is true, and then we restrict ourselves to this part. But of course, she could also say that, uh, well, she could make a trivial announcement here. So then you wouldn't have a meaningful model restriction. Yeah. Or if we are a bit part of the model, then she could say that um, <coughs> P is false. Yeah. OK. Um, let, work, let us work our way towards making this into a game. Um, this slide I can almost skip because Sunu gave the similar slide, right? So now we have the strategic games here. And the only thing is that, that I need to, uh, I don't know if this on the other side, but that maybe causes difficulties for the camera. We will see. Um, <coughs> I only have to match this definition to these public announcements that I just showed. So, OK, we have a number of players. Well, I tend to call these agents, because I work in multi-agent logic, not multi-player logic, but that doesn't matter. And then we have a number of uh, strategies. Well, I'm pointing in the direction that the strategies are making different announcements, but well, it has to be done right. And this, well, they have to be uniform because we are going to model imperfect information games. Um, and some payoff function that is not very clear either yet, but I'm pointing in the direction that the, the payoffs are somehow related to realizing epistemic goals. Uh, so, well, making this, you might say, from yet another perspective, into a planning problem, but achieving your epistemic goals by way of a game. Um, well, then we approach, yeah, I'm going to propose here that everybody makes an announcement at the same time. Then there will be some information transition induced uh, because of that. Um, but that means that people have to face the choice well, what they are going, what information they're going to give well, without knowing what the other person will give simultaneously. Okay, so, well, it's often called public announcement logic as if people are speaking. So then people speaking at the same time sounds always a bit, and I tend to call it Italian announcements. But, uh, <laughs> um, but you don't have to think of people actually speaking. It's more that they are acting without knowing the choice that the other person is making. And so you can do this with envelopes as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. this as a simultaneous transition for all uh, players uh, at the same time because the goals can be model formula yeah um, let's see if we get some examples of that yeah um, well what are the options here here we see the thing of acting simultaneously <laughs> so here we have this uh, outset model yeah? um, uncertainty about two variables yeah, in a very basic way now, what, what sort of transitions can happen if, um, well, on, on, on one assumption here, assuming that the, the actual states where there will be coffee and wine, so P and Q are both true, well, both players can make the trivial announcement, top for trivial, and then you get back into the same information state. Or um, here, A, well, reveals the piece true and B makes trivial announcement, then we get this model restriction. So the model restriction, if you do two things simultaneously, is that you just take the conjunction of these announcements, and then you uh, take the model restriction with, well, that makes the conjunction true. Yeah. Um, or they both, well, one announces P and the other Q, yeah, but then you get to the point of this structure, and this will be the resulting structure. Uh, or A makes a trivial announcement, but B makes the informative so we have four possibilities here. Okay, but that's like having what well, some sort of initial state of the game, and um, in fact one, two, three, four, five resulting states, and then you have to choose between all of those, and, and the agents have those as the options. And for a moment we forget about uniformity because that's going to be quickly into the picture. Yeah. Well, uh, maybe 
maybe you would have the answer later, I don't know. No, but not. Yeah. yeah. So, do um, you consider also agents uh, announcing that they don't know something? Yes. Yeah. In fact, I will define a strategy as for any formula. So, a strategy will, will simply be any formula in logic. Where if it's true, you announce that you know it. No. So if you know it to be true, you announce that you know it. And otherwise, you know it. You, well, you, you know that you're ignorant about it. So then you, you announce that you don't know. Yeah. It, it's just a way to have uh, the same set of strategies and all points of the structure in which you want to uh, do that game. But we will get to that later. Yeah, good point. And, but however, <laughs> uh, yeah, I've discussed this with, uh, with Rama uh, a lot too. So uh, that would be a very interesting other class of, of games which you can do with such structures, but then you have to use another semantics. Um, this particular semantics of public announcement logic uh, assumes that what you announce is true. And with that restriction, you get already interesting games. But um, without that restriction, you would get the uh, even far more interesting uh, versions of that game. Yeah. Okay. Um, the first first attempt. This will be generalized like immediately afterwards. So first, well, the, 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 um, on the previous slide we had a structure with a point. Eh, where you actually assume that, that some facts are actually true, even though the agents may not know that. Um, now I'm going to define a game eh, based on the assumption that the actual state is known to the scheduler, to the model right here. Um, well, in this particular case, we had two, a, two players, A and B. Fine. What is the strategy? Well, the strategy is just KI fine. The strategy is that I announces that she knows funny. Or, well, I can use funny notation here, mainly to say that the effect, if in state S, phi is known, <coughs> then the agent announces I know phi. But if in state S, um, phi is <coughs> not known, then the agent announces I do not know phi. And, and in this logic, it's either one or the other. Yeah. Uh, there are only two possibilities here. And <coughs> every agent is doing that for um, for its chosen strategy. What is then the, the payoff of a combination uh, of strategies for, in this case, the two agents? Well, they both choose something to say simultaneously, or they both choose to provide some information, hey, you don't have to think about this and say then um, each agent has a goal, gamma, um, well, as in the top, so there's a gamma A and a gamma B. The goal is also a formula in this logic. So the goal might, for example, be um, to get to know the other secrets. Well, so the goal might be, for A was uncertain about Q, the goal might be that I want to know Q. So the goal is uh, K A Q. Well, you, you are free to choose a goal, but the idea is that the goals are known to the agents prior to playing the game. So then the, the payoff yeah, of a combination of announcements is one for the agent that realizes its goal, and they can both realize their goals. And they both get one, otherwise they get zero. You could consider variations of that, but here I'm just demonstrating a very simple elementary setup of such a game. Um, okay. <coughs> so executing your strategy that means that you announce that you know phi if ki phi is true in state s, otherwise you announce that you don't know phi. And <coughs> agents simultaneously announce their strategies. And um, so that you can compute the model restriction relative to the conjunction of their strategies. And um, what else is relevant here? Because if you can announce any formula, well, there's a lot of formulas in, in such a logic. So that's, a, that's an infinite number of strategies. But it's merely a, a way of, of well, a, a 
modeling this syntactically, you might say, because if you have a given finite model, uh, there's a finite number of equivalence classes, so there's only a finite number of strategies. Okay? So, so for any specific model that, that really, well, for any specific finite model that defines a fairly reasonable sort of model. Okay. Um, here we go. Game. Actually, I'm doing it here. So, um, for this model, three states, there is only two strategies for uh, A. Announce that P is true, or make a trivial announcement. But A could announce, well, uh, I know that uh, P is true and that B doesn't know Q. That's another formula, right? But that formula has the same denotation, namely these two states. So you could choose any formula of any large model complexity, whatever, it doesn't matter. No, the I only agree, thing. Yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah. I mean, you have a notion maybe equivalence of formulas equivalence because they lead to the same updates. So, yeah, yeah. No, I was just wondering whether having a finite arena. Not explicitly identified. If it's, a, if it's maybe not a well defined game in that sense. No, just, no? I just that I don't know anything about infinity many moves but only infinity many positions. So that's all. I mean, it's just, just a comment. No, no, but is there any. came here, let us consider two goals for the agents. Well, the goal for agent A is, well, to know Q or know not Q. A, A was knows the truth about P, but doesn't know the truth about Q. So you might say that the goal for A is to find out Q before the other agent does. Well, what, what does it mean to find out the truth about Q? before the other player finds out the truth about P. Well, to make this true, well, but at least <laughs> not make uh, the other player learn the truth about P. So, what is the goal for P is dual. So, um, <coughs> P, well, A knows whether Q implies B knows whether P. So the, the goal for B is to know the truth about P, unless, uh, well, but at, at least as long as, um, well, and then he doesn't mind that, that A uh, knows the truth about P. You could just choose any formula, but this seems a really good formula for this setting. Then we have this model. A has two equivalence classes, uh, these two states and these three. Therefore, two strategies the trivial announcement or announcement of P. B also has a trivial announcement or the announcement of Q, true or Q. And then we compute the payoff with this formula. If they both make the informative announcement, if they both go for announcing P and announcing Q, then they both learn the truth about A and B, so they realize their goals. So we have two ones here. Um, <coughs> If A is informative, but B not, then, well, then B is happy because B realizes its goal, but A doesn't. So then we have 0, 1, well, etc. So we, we get some um, uh, game metrics and we can compute the equilibrium. Now the point is, of course, we are not yet done. 
because A doesn't know that S is the real state of the system. A is uncertain between this and this state. So we want to go um, <coughs> to a different perspective where these are imperfect, imperfect information games, and then we define the games for that setting. And so here, in this particular example, uh, with this um, uh, matrix, um, A and doesn't know that the actual state is S. Uh, she cannot distinguish this from that. And it's not so clear if we get the same outcomes when the agents play the same strategies. Um, so, in fact, we make this into a Bayesian game uh, where um, the, you might say the, the, the equivalence class of the agent is the, the signal the agent uh, has uh, or receives. Uh, and, well, depending on a signal, the agent may then play a particular strategy. And <coughs> in that sense, it makes sense to, to uh, require that the strategy is uniform. Uh, so, uh, that for each state uh, in the same equivalence class of an agent, the agent will then play the same strategy. Mm. And then, oh, the, the, the proper level to define these games is on the, on the level not of pointed models, but of models. Mm. Because if the level is then models, then the strategies depend on uh, an equivalence class, but any state in the equivalence class. And then there is a slight, um, you might say, cosmetic uh, uh, adapt, what, uh, adaptation of, uh, you might say, the, the standard way to uh, do uh, Bayesian uh, games. So, um, the, well, now the convenience appears from defining the set of strategies uh, independent from what the actual state is. Uh, the set of strategies is just announcing any formula, uh, depending on a given model. Uh, it, it's, it's solely de determined uh, by the number of equivalence classes. Um, so then we have um, two players. Then we take the set of uniform functions from the set of states to um, what was the set of all formulas that you can announce eh? with the interpretation that you, if you announce, well, you, you announce that you know it or you announce that you don't know it. And then the payoff, you compute the outcomes for any state in your given, uh, well, you might say you compute the outcome for any state in your given class and you divide this by uh, well, uh, the number of elements in your class but in a way that is order preserving if you define it this way you just compute the, the outcome anywhere and you divide it uh, by the total number of uh, states in, in the entire model and that was easier to, to, to work with but it, it doesn't really matter um, then we get oh, Uh, just zero and one. Yeah. So one if you realize your goal, zero if you don't. We we considered some generalizations where you have a series of epistemic goals like ordered in in, in according to some priorities, but we just did the very basic thing. Uh, so then these are all the different uh, model restrictions that you can get, but also from any other position uh, in this uh, state. And um, um, and now there are many more announcements, right? Like if you go to, uh, to what? suppose that P is true, Q is false, then here A would announce that P is true, well, that P is true, and B would announce that she doesn't know Q. <coughs> so then, um, we can make a mistake, then, and then B would announce actually that she knows not Q, and then you get to this point of the structure, which was not an option uh, if we merely reasoned from the state S of the model. And so we have some more model restrictions to take into account. Um, then, well, given that this is some sort of synthesis between uh, logic and game theory, I uh, I didn't like to do these uniform strategies the way game theorists write down uniform strategies, but I thought of a way to make this look nicer in 
logic, and then I call it conditional strategies. What are the conditions? Well, the conditions are the signals, as you might say, the signals um, that the agent has from the well, from the, the, the game point of view. But the signals are in the equivalence class. So the conditions are the uh, the con equivalence classes that the agents find themselves in. And given that you work with concrete models, you can characterize these equivalence classes by formulas that are true just in that equivalence class. But that makes the conditions like something you can describe in the logic. Okay? So if we have uh, this model, we could consider the well the uniform strategy for A that if A knows P, then she announces that P is true. But in the other equivalence class, she makes a trivial announcement. Okay, it's a function where here A announces P is true, in S A announces P is true, but in U A announces, gives a trivial announcement. Then an alternative way to describe that, what? Well, just thinking from A's point of view, well, if I know P, then I announce that P is true, but if I don't know P, then I make a trivial announcement. Um, so then I sum up conditional strategies, and <coughs> um, th there's a slight shift with respect to the standard modeling of Bayesian game, because then a player actually is a combination of a signal and a player, right? But here I keep the players as the original players, so I don't expand the number of players, but I simply expand the number of strategies. I uh, just found this a more natural way to, to model that in this setting. And then doing that, um, <coughs> well, then doing that, this is my modeling of, and I think this is, yes, modeling of uh, that public announcement game okay, on the level of the model, the not point conversion as a basic game with conditional strategies. Um, and if the state was going to be this, then this is the matrix associated with the moves possible in that state. If the state is this, then this is the matrix associated with the move possible in that state. And here, um, just to mention it, that um, given that the game, the goal of P eh, is to find out the truth about uh, P, um, take this case where um, B actually knows that Q is false. Then B already knows that P is true. So B will always realize it's going, doesn't have to do anything. So we will always see a 1 here at the second uh, 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 digit. Well, I could explain more about these matrices, but let me just uh, go to the conclusion here. Given these three matrices, then we can make a, a, a game matrix for the well, entire game, well, Bayesian game style, but with conditional strategies. And this lists the four strategies for A. So, how do you calculate these strategies given a model? Well, the conditional strategy is a, is, is a function of the equivalence class of the agent, okay? and all the choices the agent can make in that class. So, it's the number of equivalence classes multiplied with, well, uh, actually the number of, of dichotomies on, on the model, which is the number of subsets divided by two. So, but, but in this case, it's the number of, well, for each <coughs> equivalence class it has to make a choice, so it's four in this case. There are two equivalence classes, and, and well, there is four subsets, but two dichotomies. So we have, um, if um, P is true, if A knows P, then it may make the trivial strategy, and in the other class also, or true and not P, or P and true, or P and not P. So these are the four possibilities. And <coughs> we do the same for B. Um, how do we compute the outcome of this? Well, we, we add up um, whatever happens here and there right, for each of the states in where this can take place. And the first item here would be the sum of this, this, and this part of these other matrices. So, so in this way, you get a resulting matrix, and you can uh, compute the equilibrium well, of that matrix. Okay? So, so we can see that for this game, it's it's uh, well, at least both being uh, informative 
is in equilibrium because that here announced to this uh, entry of the matrix. Um, maybe that was too fast, but is there a question about this example? Uh, what do you think of the sun? Is it being, well, being happy or not happy? Why don't you use good in equations? The, um, how do I compute the payoff for uh, a conditional strategy? I add the payoffs for the uh, strategies and all the points. Yeah. Where I mean, why do you add? I mean, because the usual thing in Bayesian games is that you conditionalize by the signal. Ah, yes. um, which I do not do here, but um, just adding it for all states and dividing it is all of preserving with respect to conditionalizing by the signal. Okay. Um, well, then the question becomes, given this, um, you might say, very concrete exercise on a tricky model with, well, with players that can make informative announcements, and we have seen a simple example, are there non-trivial things to do in this setting? Um, well, I don't really know, but I thought maybe there are non-trivial things to do in this setting. Um, at least you can have funny, well, uh, in the uncommon positions, but um, then the question is whether you can make relations between uh, having particular goals or playing particular strategies with respect to the logic in which this can all be described, and, and, and you might say some standard uh, uh, game theoretical concepts. So, um, well, Playing the same strategy is a Nash equilibrium. Well, playing the same strategy everywhere, then playing the trivial strategy is always a Nash equilibrium. This is one uh, thing you can get. Or, um, um, well, let's look at the goals. What, what is problematic about this, this logic of public announcement? Of things like P is true, what? things about ignorance. What is ignorance in this logic? Ignorance is what, a negation followed by modality. Formulas that are not preserved after moral restrictions. But a goal can be any formula, right? So you can have, you, your goal can be to keep your opponent ignorant of something. To keep your opponent ignorant of something, you have to avoid making certain announcements. Um, Okay, so, so those are the, 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 well, the goals for which there may be interest in games. But take the deal of that. Suppose you do not have negations before your uh, um, modalities. Suppose your goals are positive formulas. Suppose uh, your goals are, in a way, um, goals to inform uh, other agents of, of things, right? to get them uh, more, make them more knowledgeable. If that is your goal, then a weekly double strategy is to be maximally informative. What is maximally informative? Well, maximally informative means that if you are in this model of uncertainty uh, with many uh, uh, agents and many governance classes, you live in a particular state in that model. You can announce exactly what you know in the sense that you can announce that you live in that actual equivalence class and not weakening that announcement by, um, well, adding more equivalence classes. So the maximally informative strategy is that... That means the, you, you tell all you know. You tell all you know, yeah. So if your goals are positive, then telling all you know is a weekly number strategy. Um, and that means that the goals must be this fragment of a logic. I could say a bit about this fragment, but uh, this is the part that is obviously about the positive formulas, and this is less obviously positive, but uh, the, the, the condition in the public announcement modality is indeed a condition. So it's, it's on condition that finds true, then if you write this in disjunctive form, you will see it flip around, and then after all, this is also a positive thing. But I could tell a story about this. Um, 
than the thing we did not do. Uh, how much more time do I have actually? Okay, oh, that, that's great. Yeah, yeah, I haven't finished yet. So, yeah. um, <coughs> because typically communicative strategies uh, with uh, well, agents or, or in, well, yeah, the, the pretension of, of people working in, in the logic of knowledge is actually that they, they say something about how people really talk and communicate, right? And that involves typically not talking at the same time, but talking in different order and having strategies that take several steps. Well, this we can't do yet. That is disappointing. Um, but there is a, a nice reason why we couldn't do that. Um, and, and the reason is that, um, well, it depends on the, on the oracle declaring that the goals has been, have been satisfied. Um, it, well, typically in communication, you might say, if you play such a game, then you would like to announce, okay, but now I've won, so to speak. Hey, I've, I've, I've realized my goal. But that's an announcement. And these are public announcement games. So even to observe that you've realized your goal is in fact an informative announcement, which may therefore change the state of the system and may actually make you lose the game. Uh, because that goal could be to keep the other uninformed. And, and well, I could give you examples, but I keep, like, prefer to keep it at the abstract level, but to inform the other people that the other person that actually you have kept uh, him or her uh, uninformed may actually be right the thing to inform that person. Well, you could easily make up settings in, in security protocols, for example. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> so it's very dangerous to, to let the other person know where you are at that stage. So, well, the alternative would be to just have it uh, um, to have a number of extensive games that consist of a fixed number of moves eh? so that everybody knows that after a number of announcement it's the end of the game and then just the, the count is made up yeah, whoever has realized this goal or not um, but if you don't have a fixed length uh, game um, <coughs> observing that you have one is an informative announcement but there's also continuing to play okay? it's like an implicit announcement that you haven't won yet so that would then already be informative and that has to be modeled as a move that has also to be taken into account. There is probably a number of, of well, modeling simplifications or assumptions that then make it easier to also have these extensive uh, game versions of that. But, but, well, I never got to that stage with the people with whom I've been working on such games. But it's something I would like to do in the future. Yeah. Um, then for a different topic, um, Although somewhat related from the point of view of these games, instead of making announcements, you could ask questions, right? So nothing you do in communication is asking questions and then you get answers. So the, the procedure way to do this in, in the setting of this game is that um, you can ask questions, but the other agent, the other player, is obliged to answer the question. Okay? So that's the restriction. Um, <coughs> So here we go to question answer games. And, and questions can also be modeled in this logic of knowledge and change of knowledge, but in a different way from announcements. And so instead of making a truthful announcement, an agent can ask a question. Um, well, as we have seen, a truthful announcement by an agent um, is modeled as, as the public announcement KI5, for the agent knows that's fine. Um, and a public announcement has another restriction. Okay, what is a question in setting of these scripty model? A partition of the domain, but without model restriction. Um, so if you have a question phi, then you have any model, you you, you can uh, divide it into the phi part of the model and the not phi part of the model, and <coughs> that's a partition. Now there's a slight complication here. Well, it's always a complication is a big word, but it's it's a, instead of a, a dichotomy, you get a trichotomy because a question answered by an agent, and well, there's always what, <laughs> there's always three there's there are always three possibilities, not two. 
if someone asks me, do you know uh, P? I can say yes, I know P is true, I can say uh, you can say yes, I know the P is false, or I can say I don't know. So to the question, yes, no, don't know, there are three uh, answers to the question. Can, are you allowed to ask questions for which you already know the answer? Yeah. So, so we have uh, a petition of the domain into the states where the agent who is answering the question knows that phi is true. The agent who answers the question knows that phi is false. And well, and the other place where neither of these is the case, but that's where the agent doesn't know the answer to the question. And, and just like in the case of public announcements where there are always two possibilities, that may mean that there is three or less of such situations. Yeah, because I can ask the question, do you know if true uh, is the case? And then the answer is yes, true is true. <laughs> so, so then the other two of the three parts are empty. Yeah? So it's, it's always three or less uh, poss possible answers. Um, okay, but that suggests the way, the way to model um, games with questions and answers, similarly to, to uh, how um, before eh, we modeled uh, games with just uh, announcements, um, but uh, in a slightly different uh, setting, well, at least if you think of uh, how to uh, calculate the number of strategies, because if I'm making an announcement, my uniform strategies were determined by what I know, okay, my equivalent class, my signal, and the number of partitions of the, the domain, of the number of partitions for me of the domain. But if I'm asking a question, my uniform strategies are of course still determined by my equivalent class, by what I know, but by the answers I expect from the other agents. So it's determined by the number of partitions of the agent who answers the question. Okay, so it's a different way to calculate the number of strategies here. Um, okay, so question induces a partition of the domain in three. Uh, these three. Um, then, although you can ask any formula phi, uh, infinite number of strategies, for a given finite model, this always reduces to a, a finite number of, of strategies modulo uh, uh, in equivalence relation, which says that any two questions are the same. If well, this should be a sign. Um, if if what well, if the tripartition is the same, yeah, but it could be that the, the phi you ask well, the, the, the correspondence is that this corresponds to that and that to this, so the, the, the correspondence between these through elements in that uh, set can be anything. Um, and <coughs> strategies then become any questions. Um, as I said, the number of different strategies uh, is determined by your equivalence class and the number of equivalence class by the person asking, uh, sorry, responding to the question, and um, that brings us to the definition of <coughs> um, a pointed question answer game, which is very similar to the pointed public announcement game, but instead of announcements, there are now questions, and the payoff for two questions is determined by the, um, well, my question yeah. is determined by the answer of the other agent, and the, the question asked by B is determined by the answers that A can give. Yeah. Where, well, funny notation again means that simply the, the, the unique one of these three that is actually true is the, the answer that is given. Yeah. And that, that is the only difference. Um, and you do this the same for the model and then there's no difference at all 
Okay, so that is the same definition. But here is the example. And so this was the, the just for the, 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 the same example, uh, Kirby model, uh, with the same actual state where P and Q are true. Coffee is approaching quickly now. <laughs> yeah. And then we actually get coffee. <laughs> and so, so this was the, the matrix associated with the announcements that the A and B can make. And well, and in this case, this is the matrix slightly uh, um, similar to the questions the uh, A and B can make. So A can make the announcement that P is true, but if A wants to make a question and is interested to find out the truth about Q, then the likely thing for A is to ask about Q. And so um, in a way, that is then uh, the, the question that you can ask. Or, Thinking about the partition again, the, the announcements A can make are determined by this equivalence class and this equivalence class, but the questions A can make are determined by B's equivalence class here and B's equivalence class there. On this model, there's only a slight difference. This is very similar to that. Uh, but <coughs> um, in general, this is not always very simple. So, in, in general, we can have that um, um, here, unfortunately the numbers are wrong, but suppose some sort of model where A has two equivalence classes and B three equivalence classes, then in the public announcement game, A has four conditional strategies and B uh, um, 24, I think, not 32, but if you have the question-answer games, then actually the number of strategies for A and B is different. Okay. So it's a function of n, the number of equivalent classes of yourself, and uh, for public announcement games, the number of uh, uh, well, the number of partitions, so the number of subsets divided by two, so two to the power n minus one. But for question answer games, it's still a function of n, your number of equivalent classes, but the number of partitions for the um, other player, so 2 to the power n minus 1, where n is the number of uh, uh, equivalent classes for the other uh, player. And, and that's only for a certain simplified version of this question answer game where we have left the answer don't know uh, out of uh, consideration. And so otherwise it gets more uh, complex. Now, one of these things that was nice to observe about public announcement games is that you always have a most informative strategy. And say all you know, right? because that's just well, uh, uh, announcing in which equivalence class you live. In question-answer games, you do not have that strategy. That is the most informative answer, but you may not know what the question is to elicit that answer. Right? So this is an interesting difference between these two games. So in public announcement games, you can say all you know. And the most informative strategy is to say all you know. In, in, in the way you know what the most informative strategy is, yeah, because I'm, you're saying it. But in the question answer games, um, <coughs> it's still the case that the most, well, an answer is, is an announcement. So the most informative answer is the, the is that the player who is answering uh, is obliged to, to confirm uh, that his actual state is in the equivalence class where he lives. But that answer is elicited by a question, and I do not know which question it elicited is, well, gets that most informative answer. Because I may be uncertain about which equivalence class the other player is living in. Uh, that calls for an example, right? Yeah. Yeah. What mm -hmm. if you keep asking for your? No, then you'll be all right. Yeah. But you want to know if your goal happens to be something to do. Yeah, but the the, 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 the simple setup here is a one-shot game where everybody asks one question only at the same. Time. Yeah. But indeed, if you're allowed several questions, then it becomes uh, well, like a twenty questions, right? So to get the the goal as quickly as possible, that will be an interesting setting. Um, so, 
So, well, this is still a bit in progress, and one of the nice things, and, and, yeah, and, and certainly question games, even more than public announcement games, um, become much more informative if you have uh, extensive uh, forms where you can have sequences of questions and answers, because that's typically what happens in communication. <laughs> so, obviously, you want to do uh, the, diff the other thing there, but this is also something that I haven't done, but I would love to do with uh, someone interested in that. Yeah. Um, so, a final variation there. Um, in the semantics I presented, the, the restriction from an informative action is that what is that the new information is correct. That's what you say is true. But there's a different semantics for this logic, where you do not eliminate uh, worlds, but you eliminate arrows. <laughs> um, where in, um, <coughs> well, maybe the new information is believed <coughs> to be true, even if it may be false. So you can feed, you can say P, whereas P might be actually false. But as long as it still results in the person that you're talking to believing the piece true, you have achieved what you want. Well, these seem to be far more interesting things, and you can lie. Um, now, it's not so clear how to model that, well, what, what the good primitives are to model lying games. One thing I have considered is, well, lying is no problem at all, in, in not even in daily life and communication. The problem is to be caught lying. That's the only thing that's wrong. So you could have games with um, well positive payoff for realizing your epistemic goals, whether you lie or tell the truth, doesn't matter. But if you lie and, and, and then the other agent learns that you are actually lying, then you get a very highly negative payoff. Um, what? So that might be an adjustment to this sort of setting. You choose some different semantics, um, and you really find the payoff. But um, it's not so clear that you well, it's not so clear that it's a good way to model because the thing with lying is that you are really considered in re repeating games, where it sometimes a lie occurs and that then reduces the confidence you have in the other player, the other agent. So. You need a different way to model this than by negative payoffs. Well, it's possible, but um, so you could have repetitive games where you have same payoffs as before, but where you change the payoffs as a result of a lying, a lie being detected in the next repetitions of the game, you know, or some some kind of uh, uh, well, that the next five you are more uh, distrustful of the agent but then in due term you you well um, there are various solutions to address that and i i have no idea at that stage well we've been talking about this uh, well right so um but it, it seems a very interesting uh, uh, variation of this game so i think that's about when i will uh, uh, start i mean stop <laughs> uh, yeah that was not wishful thinking, I was just uh, really wanting to stop. Um, so something has been written up on this, and, and the lying game is still... Uh, so the title of my next publication is already clear, that's going to be the lying game, and then have a picture too. Um, but uh, the, the content still has to be written. Yeah, yeah. And this, this reminds me of the time that, that was two years ago, right? And, um, yeah, so the, the previous presentation I gave on this topic uh, didn't go right for two reasons. The first reason was that I adapted Thomas Ogotten's slides, who wrote them in some special uh, Apple sort of software from which I could produce PDF, and then when I presented them in the games workshop uh, at, at, well, at Sujata's Institute, then all the text disappeared, but only the colors remained. Something weird. <laughs> so I couldn't present the slides. But the other problem there was that uh, I like funny titles, so I made the title of the presentation to be announced. And that resulted in no end of fun between the organizers of the <laughs> conference and, and, and us. Yeah, yeah, okay, so thank you. That's it.